Even if you're the ultimate baseball buff, dedicating your whole life to the game, there's still loads of stuff you probably didn't know about Major League Baseball. So these are the things you didn't know about the MLB. Did you know that every baseball used in MLB games is coated with mud from a secret spot in New Jersey? It's called Lena Blackburn Baseball Rubbing Mud, and it gives pitchers the grip they need to throw those tricky pitches. Before this special mud came along, baseballs were rubbed with all sorts of weird stuff, from water and dirt to tobacco juice and shoe polish. But hey, here's a fun fact for you. MLB mascots rake in more cash than you might think. Yeah, that's right. These guys aren't just sweaty dudes in costumes. They're entertainers, making over 250 grand a year. So next time you see Philly Fanatic or Mr. Met, give him a nod for keeping the crowd hyped. Now on to a bit of a downer. Ever heard about the Miami Marlins mascot mishap? Back in 1997, on opening day, a Navy SEAL dressed as Billy the Marlin parachuted into the ballpark. But here's where it gets wild. A gust of wind blew off the mascot's head mid-air. Could you imagine the shock? The headless Billy had to make a rather awkward landing without it. Talk about a grand entrance gone wrong. But don't worry, the missing head was eventually found months later by two fans along the Florida Turnpike. Meet Joe Charbonneau, the man who not only played baseball but lived it to the extreme. From fixing his own broken nose with pliers to removing a tattoo with a razor, he was as unconventional as they come. His antics on and off the field earned him the Rookie of the Year award in 1980. But here's the kicker. Joe Charbonneau wasn't just a ball player. He was a local legend, inspiring his very own theme song. Go Joe Charbonneau! which skyrocketed to number three on the charts. Now let's talk about something you probably didn't know about the game, the ground rule triple. We've all heard of the ground rule double, but did you know a player can actually hit a ground rule triple? Picture this, a player attempts to use his hat to stop a ball, whether it's on the ground or in the air. But here's the catch, using a hat to interfere with the play results in a penalty of three bases for both the batter and any base runners. So, next time you're watching a game, keep an eye out for this rare but fascinating occurrence on the diamond. Ever heard about the massive trade between the LA Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs back in 1957? It was a game changer. Both teams decided to shake things up big time by trading their entire minor league teams. Yeah, you heard that right. The whole shebang. This bold move came as the Dodgers were gearing up for their move to the West Coast, and the Cubs were itching for a fresh start. But hold on to your seats, folks. Here's another juicy tidbit you may not know. The MLB All-Star Game is a big deal. It's not just for show. There's major stuff at stake. Winning the All-Star Game used to mean snagging home field advantage in the World Series. Can you believe it? So when the league's top dogs like Mike Trout and Bryce Harper stepped onto the field, they were playing for keeps. Well, until 2016, that is, when the MLB decided to switch things up. But hey, it sure added some extra excitement to the game while it lasted. You'd figure it'd be a breeze to catch the last moments of a game with Trevor Hoffman on the mount. I mean, the guy's a legend, racking up 601 saves throughout his career. But Kevin Towers, the Padres' former GM, didn't catch many of those nail-biting finishes. Nope, he was too wound up to handle the tension. Just like Billy Bean, who's known for avoiding watching the A's play, Towers has his own way of dealing with the stress. He just hunkered down in the manager's office, TV turned off, whenever Hoffman took the mound. If he heard the crowd erupting in cheers, then he knew his closer had come through in the clutch. Did you know that an MLB baseball only lasts about six pitches on average? That's right. Whether it's smacked out of the park by a powerful swing, gets all dirty and scuffed up, or just takes too much wear and tear, these balls don't stick around for long. It's been said that during a typical game, the umpires swap out about five to six dozen balls. And get this, each team has to have a whopping 90 balls ready to go for every game. Now wrap your head around this. Over the course of 162 games in a season, the league goes through over 900,000 baseballs. And that's not even counting the playoffs. Imagine the cash the MLB drops on all those balls. Crazy, right? And we're just getting started with these mind-blowing MLB facts. Ever wonder where you can find the craziest food concoctions? Look no further than MLB stadiums. Forget your typical ballpark hot dogs and peanuts, because here, they're serving up the rarest and most outrageous eats you can imagine. Really crunchy, chewy on the inside, it's salty and sweet at the same time. That's a really nice combination. Take Cleveland Guardian Stadium, for example, where you can chow down on glizzies smothered in Fruit Loops, mac and cheese, and bacon. And over at the Texas Rangers Stadium, they're dishing out flaming hot Cheeto pretzels that are set your taste buds on fire. 
But hold on to your hats, because the wildest burger creations are where it's at. In Philly, they're wrapping burgers in glazed donuts, while Atlanta Braves fans are sinking their teeth into burgers with pizzas for buns. Not to mention their famous breakfast cleanup burger. Now that's a mouthful. But wait, there's more to the ballpark experience than just crazy food. Did you know that according to the MLB Handbook's Rule 8.04b, pitchers only have 12 seconds to throw the ball after receiving it back from the catcher when the bases are empty? Yeah, you heard that right. If they take too long, the umpire can add a ball to the count, slowing down the game. So next time you're at the stadium, keep an eye on that pitch clock. It's hard to say what's more unusual, a rainout happening in the covered Astrodome, or the fact that during the delay, the players ended up having dinner right on the field. Here's how it went down. On June 15th, 1976, heavy rains caused severe flooding in Houston, leading to the cancellation of that evening's game between the Pirates and the Astros. Since it was impossible for fans and staff to get to the stadium, the game had to be called off. However, since players usually arrive early, they were already there when the decision was made. With the game postponed, the stadium staff improvised and set up a makeshift dinner spread around second base for the players. Around 20 lucky fans who had managed to brave the weather and make it into the stadium were also invited to join. As for what they ate, pitcher Paul Siebert couldn't recall much. He joked that there were more drinks than food on the menu, which might explain why the details of the meal were a bit fuzzy. Did you know that despite Babe Ruth's legendary status as a hitter for the New York Yankees, he wasn't exactly clutch when it came to pinch hitting? While he boasted an impressive career batting average of 344, his pinch hitting skills left much to be desired. Throughout his time in the MLB, Ruth only managed a dismal 167 batting average as a pinch hitter, securing just 13 hits out of 67 at bats. Here's something you probably didn't know. Before 1929, baseball players didn't have numbers on their jerseys. That idea actually came from the New York Yankees. They were all set to debut their number jerseys on April 14th, but unfortunately, the game got rained out. However, the Cleveland Indians decided to give it a shot just two days later, becoming the first team to sport numbers on the back of their uniforms. Quite the unexpected turn of events, am I right? Now, Alan Anderson had quite the stroke of luck during his brief stint with the Twins from 1986 to 1991. As a starting pitcher, he had some impressive seasons, notably leading the American League in 1988 with a stellar 2.45 ERA and racking up 33 wins over two seasons. But here's where it gets interesting. Despite his contributions, Anderson managed to snag two World Series rings with the Twins in 1987 and 1991 without even stepping onto the postseason roster. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. Back in the early days of baseball, especially during the first part of the 20th century, which we call the dead ball era, hitting a home run wasn't as straightforward as it is today. It wasn't until the early 1920s that balls really started flying out of the ballpark more frequently. Here's the kicker. Before the 1930 season in the American League and 1931 in the National League, a player could score a home run if they hit a fly ball that bounced within the playing field before going over or through the outfield fence. Interestingly, Babe Ruth never scored any bounce home runs, but Lou Gehrig managed to rack up a few of them during his career. It's funny how the rules of the game have evolved over time, isn't it? If it weren't for Bing Crosby's quirky superstitions, we wouldn't have a full game video of Game 7 of the 1960 World Series, the legendary game that concluded with Bill Mazeroski's unforgettable walk-off home run. Bing, who was a part owner of the Bucks, thought he brought bad luck to the team, so he jetted off to Paris with his wife, opting to listen to the game on the radio instead. But here's the twist. He had the foresight to hire a company to film the game from his TV. Fast forward to 2010, and this recording, discovered in a wine cellar, stands as the only complete copy of that legendary game. Now check this out. Did you know that the first father-son duo to play in the major leagues were Ken Griffey Sr. and Ken Griffey Jr.? Yeah, they teamed up for the Seattle Mariners in 1990, making history. And to add to the awesomeness, on September 14th of that same year, the Griffeys blasted back-to-back -back home runs, marking yet another father-son milestone in baseball. Did you know the modern umpiring system we see in baseball today was actually cooked up by a football player? Yeah, you heard it right. Cal Hubbard, a Hall of Fame football player, thought the umpires needed better positioning on the field to make more consistent calls. Talk about a game changer. All right, hear this out. Ever wonder why the St. Louis Cardinals are called the Cardinals? It's not because they have birds all over their gear or a big bird as their mascot. Nah, it goes all the way back to their socks. 
Back in the day, they were known as the Perfectos. But one day, columnist Willie McHale overheard a lady admiring the team's hosiery, calling it a lovely shade of cardinal. And just like that, a legendary team name was born. You know how a typical MLB game lasts around three hours? Well, sometimes they wrap up way quicker than that. Back in 1919, the New York Giants faced off against the Philadelphia Phillies, and you won't believe this, but the entire game lasted just 51 minutes. Both teams' pitchers went the distance, but the Giants clinched a 6-1 victory in lightning-fast time. Now let's talk about a jaw-dropping moment from the 2019 Home Run Derby. Guerrero Jr. went absolutely bananas, smashing a whopping 91 homers during the event, with 40 of those bombs coming in the second round alone. But get this, he didn't even win. Nope, he lost to beat Alonzo in the final showdown by just one home run. But don't sweat it, Alonzo's a beast in the derby, holding the record for the most homers over four appearances from 2019 to 2023, totaling a mind-blowing 195 dingers, two of which he snagged the win with. Bonus. Look at him playing he, the knows, he knows he's in a good spot right here. This next moment isn't just some incredibly rare occurrence. It's about the 2013 World Series. And let me tell you, it wasn't your average championship showdown. You see, the Boston Red Sox weren't just playing for themselves. They were playing for the entire city of Boston. You see, back in April 2013, tragedy hit when a bombing rocked the city's annual marathon, leaving three dead and hundreds injured. Fast forward about six months later, and the Red Sox clinched game six against the St. Louis Cardinals, securing their second title since 2004. But it wasn't just about the trophy. It was about bringing hope and healing to a city in need. If you've ever been to a game, you've probably seen those fan promotions where someone gets a chance to win a prize if the team does something cool. But how often is that prize worth a cool million bucks? Well, thanks to Jay Bell, one lucky fan got to cash in big time. It all went down during a game against the Oakland A's on July 11th, 1999. Galeen Hoyle was the chosen one. Asked to pick a player in inning, she thought a D-back would hit a home run. She took a gamble and went with Jay Bell, a standout hitter that season, and picked the sixth inning. With the bases loaded, Bell stepped up to the plate. After batting through a full count and fouling off some pitches, he smacked that million dollar homer. Congratulations, Guy Lee, on winning a million dollars in the Shamrock Farms. Plenty of Braves players have made their mark in the record books, but Red Barrett's entry might just be the most unusual. On August 10th, 1944, Barrett pitched a shutout against the Reds, clinching a 2-0 victory. What's remarkable is that Barrett achieved this with a record low 58 pitches, making it the most efficient game in history. Moreover, the game set another record for the shortest nine-inning night game, clocking in at just one hour and 15 minutes. So, how many of these did you already know about? Drop a comment and let us know. And hey, if you enjoy the video and want to see more like it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. That way, you never miss out on our future content. Thanks for tuning in.